it doesn't save any scripts in the SSIS. That is the default functionality of how it's built in. I don't know why, but that is. I mean, it doesn't ask you that do you want to save them or something. Click on OK. And if I click on Save, there it is. Yep. Right. Now what I'm going to do is, as my database holds, I think, watch our max fields over there. Yes, it does. And our output is holding string so we need to convert this string remind you is not a unicode string it's uh, you need to convert it to a unicode string before you can get the data in there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use data conversion and i'm going to convert both of the strings in there the links and this to unicode actually one of them i'm just going to keep as Unicode text stream. The other one I'm going to change it as Unicode text, but that is an unsure. And I'm going to name it as Okay, so here we are with this thing. Right now, what I'm going to do is uh, just click on OK, and you should get that. There are no errors because we don't have any red box. Another good thing which I'm missing at this point is, but I would really want you to do is that, I mean, you should ideally enable the event handlers on this bit so that once an error occurs, it should give you a detail that where the errors occurred. And in my case, I'm just gonna, I mean, if I would save it, I would be logging it into a table. But at this point, I'm skipping it because it would take too much time for the demonstration. Anyway, and in terms of that, you can also have checkpoints, which I'm sure that you are aware of, uh, once who have worked already with the SSIS. And those checkpoints are can point to a file where you can keep the track of the event. So if, let's say, my error occurs on this part, again, when I'm going to run the package, it's going to start from this part. It's not going to go to this and everything. But I don't think we need that in this scenario anyway i'm going to get a destination over here which is an sql oledb destination so i'm just going to drag the oledb component and i'm going to call it the name of my database scrappers and the name of my table just to keep a track of things for myself and I don't need to document too much on that I do you should document you should use the annotations and everything as well right okay so here we are now I need to create if I double click on this it's got no connection at this point and it's asking me that do I have any connections select from the list of connections manager okay I've got a flat file which is a source connection but we cannot use it for the destination excuse me I'm going to create a new data source. I'm creating a data source because the thing is that uh, they already exist. I think over here I've already created them. But I'm just going to show you again that how to create them as well. Like I was saying, the good thing about the data sources is that they can be reused. So when I'm going to create, I mean, uh, whenever you're creating um, SSIS, project um, i would recommend it's highly recommended that you create data sources and data source views in some cases while you're working di disconnected data but for um, sure you should create data sources because then you can uh, you don't need to create the connections again and again and you can reuse them if i'm correct actually that i'm <laughs> right and i'm click gonna click on ok and we've got the connection over there it was already there so it didn't make any changes i'm just gonna click on finish and it gives me the data source name I'm going to name it as this and scrappers and finish this. So we've got data source scrappers. That's fine. Just going to name it as underscore for my. Right. So I'm going to add it to the connection managers by right clicking here. New connection from data source. And it's already picked up that connection. This is just a general string for a normal Visual Studio. Um, uh, for a normal connection string. I'm going to click on OK. And we've got our connection manager over here. I'm going to double click on that. 
and it's already picked up the default connection manager as we've only got one OLED DB so it's just picked up this one if you've got more it will show you the list of more OLED DB connections over here so I'm gonna choose the table which in our case we've got table web scrap and that we've already created over here and I'm gonna leave the default settings and I'm gonna go on to the mappings we've only got one mapping in here but I'm going to delete this as this is not Unicode 1 and I'm going to map it against the Unicode ones. Right, and there you are. Leave the connection as it is, just choose the table. Another thing, you can also use queries over here, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this. Actually, it's pretty easy and fast for me in terms of that. Click on OK. And click on save and there you are I mean you've got your package designed so once I go here I type it as click here we don't have anything here so I'm gonna go back there save this and I'm going to run this package now and see how it goes just gonna go on the data flow Right, and voila, <laughs> it's uh, succeeded and we've got six rows, which if you can see over here, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six rows in here as well. So if I close this and I go back to my SQL server, which is here, click on execute, bravo, woohoo, right, and we have got our HTML which is quite stripped but I mean again this can be used and you've got the URLs there you are over there I'm just gonna stop this project actually and now if you have a look on them you can easily see that you've got your URLs there right if I'm gonna run the project again it's gonna create in duplicates which is really not a good thing and I won't do it actually at this point <laughs> but if you want to retest it you can do it and any questions you've got I'm more than happy to answer them just post them onto my blog and I'll get back to you on that and that was it for the importing of the data the HTML data and stripping out the tags and everything in there and the package is also available online for download so if you want you can just download it and use it all you have to do is change the data source which should be pretty simple I mean another good approach would be if I would have just saved it as a package configuration or saved it as a connection string in the package configuration but I'm not doing it at this point and it's a raw package and I can try to keep it like that way it's not for production actually at this point so if you guys feel you can do that and thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Bye-bye.